slightly more natural lighting. My package arrived. I am your father. I'm editing and cookie. Hey everyone, I wanted to make an official announcement somewhere, but I wasn't on camera in the last video. You guys already know that I've recently partnered up with New Type. They are an online Gumpla store that sells Gumpla, including resin, tools, and paints shipped internationally. And if you use my affiliate link, newtypehq.com slash frostysnow, it also helps you make a small commission. So give them a lot of love too, guys. Now, let's move on to the marble painting. I knew that marble painting will be tricky, so I tested it out on the SD Nightingale first. I had a lot of failed parts, repainted those three times, but finally got it down. In retrospect, while it may be good practice, the larger the piece, the harder it is to achieve an even marble effect. So if you're looking to experiment, a kit with smaller parts will be a bit easier. Now I'm going to apply all the things I learned on the kit I was practicing for and share all those techniques with you. These are the two kits I plan to marble paint. Let's start with Surfacer and Gloss Black. As with any paint job, we'll start with Surfacer. I start with giving a light coat to the underside of the part. You never really know when undersides might peek through. It's just easier than having to repaint later. I chose the standard gray surfacer rather than black surfacer because my current IPP black surfacer is quite matte and I'd have to spray a gloss black on top anyways. Gray surfacer is usually thinner than colored surfacer, so I try to keep the paint job thin whenever possible. Now we move on to gloss black. Instead of a tacky coat, like with the Surfacer, I go right to painting a good layer of paint to get a smooth finish. Notice it dried quite matte, so I give it a second coat. You can also paint a clear gloss on top, but I don't feel like cleaning my airbrush and changing the paint. In the second round, notice that I paint with a much stronger pressure. You can see the paint bouncing off the sides to make sure I get a glossier finish. I'm happy with the gloss finish after the second round. Next, let's define and look at some good and bad examples of marble painting. Good marbling has a clear contrast between light and dark parts with no clouding and is even all around the part and relative to other parts. Poor marbling is either too dark, see all this dark area, too light, meaning the part is all silver and the black doesn't show through, too cloudy, it has a foggy, messy look rather than marbling or looks completely different from its respective part. The part on the right looks a bit too messy, almost cloudy for my tastes. Obviously, this is my personal definition. If you like this look, you can go with it. Getting a good marbling is comprised of controlling three different factors. One, paint ratio. Two, the surround wrap. And three, the painting. Let's start with the paint and thinner ratio first. So I have the aluminum silver and the lacquer thinner. Um, I can't remember if this was thinned with regular thinner or leveling thinner, but this is definitely leveling thinner. Leveling thinner is really good to use with marbling because leveling thinner dries more slowly than regular thinner. So you want the metallic to dry as slowly as possible so that you have enough time to get the saran wrap on top and create that marbling effect. About a seven to three-ish ratio. Half a cup of paint. One, two, three. Good squares of thinner mix. If this ever is too thin or too thick, you can just redo it, no problem. Next, let's look at the saran wrap. It's a lot better to use two saran wrap in, in one, like a thick crunched up piece of saran wrap that you can put right over the part immediately and don't use too much strength and just kind of wrap it up in it and it creates a much nicer marbling effect without any clouding because there's lots of gaps between the wrinkles rather than just using one piece of straight saran wrap and then just putting it on top it's just gonna lay pretty much flat on the part and then you're not gonna get much marbling effect because there's not enough wrinkles and gaps between the wrinkles finally let's paint Notice how my parts are organized from small to big. Starting with the smaller parts gives you some good practice before going on to the bigger parts. So when you're spraying, make sure you spray the bottom. And I'm spraying at a pretty high pressure, pretty close, doing it in a circular motion. And that 
that's one coat and quickly another coat just to get it pretty thick and while it's still wet quickly over the top don't push let it sit on the top and then don't wait too long to take it off because you might not look how it looks and you can still adjust it a bit so I'm really happy with this except the part in the back if you feel like there's not enough here you can just poke at it a bit and create a little bit more marbling effect. And you can't do this once it's totally dry, so I'm not gonna overdo that. Whenever you re-poke at it, I think the effect never really comes out as nice as initially. And this head piece happens to be one part, but when I was doing the nightingale, the head was split like in the middle into two parts, and you wanna make sure that any parts that really should look like one piece, assemble it, it up and do the marbling and then take it apart later if you need to when you assemble. Don't wait too long because you might want to do touch-ups, pull it off. This came out a little bit darker than I would like. You don't want to push the saran wrap too much, but I like this part. Okay, so I'm not going to touch this up much bigger. Yep. Scrunch this up. Um, now we're going to go on to the bigger parts. So when I was first doing this originally with the nightingale, once I finished painting this whole piece, the paint here was already dry and the paint here was still a little bit wet. And then when I went over it, the marbling would only happen on the part that was wet and then the part that was already dried and sprayed earlier. It wasn't very marbled. So to prevent that, you basically have to do like what I said before and then that prevents it from having that kind of um, uneven marbling effect. Let's give this a go. Always on the edges first. You don't really need to bother with marbling those parts. This piece is quite big. I'm gonna have to spray this quite fast. Quite close to the part. Get as much paint on there as possible. Second time around, can already see a little bit of pooling. And then get this on quick. And don't move it around too much once you've put it on because it'll just make it kind of cloudy and you'll kind of smudge it. So just leave it on, but don't take it off too slowly either because then you can't do any touch-ups if you're not happy with the part because it needs to still be a bit wet for you to do the touch-up. So this came out pretty even. The larger the piece, the faster you have to go. High pressure, very fast close to the part, starting again from the first part. I can see the pooling on this one. It's good, give it that really bright silver right on top quickly. Okay, so a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, so this looks like not really enough. So I'm just adding a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. If your paint wasn't wet enough, you wouldn't be able to do this. Okay. Another piece here. Okay, this looks good to me. Review time. Parts too dark, you need a thicker, more wrinkly saran wrap. Parts too cloudy, you pushed or moved the saran wrap too much. Parts too bright, your paint is not wet enough. The only ones I'm gonna redo are these two parts, which is really interesting because they have the exact opposite problems. This one I sprayed on too dry and it's not dark enough it's just too light and there isn't enough of the marbling effect and this one i pushed the saran wrap on way too hard and it also fell off the peg and then i had to like grab it so the marbling is way too dark and doesn't match the counterpart so i'm just going to redo these two parts only and spray it black again What's great about marble paint is because the marble is naturally bumpy, you can redo it without having to worry about making the surface smooth again. Just repaint it black. I have a suspicion. This is where we keep our masks, by the way. I have a suspicion my package arrived. Cookie ordered some stuff. I actually don't really know what he ordered. I just know he said he ordered some panel line. Oh, line master. We couldn't afford the uh, <laughs> ones from Japan. <laughs> so we bought this cheaper option because Cookie keeps breaking all my freaking liners. 
So these are the paint, uh, the Gaia Flag Clear Cookie always uses that on his resin kit. Clear green, this is for my Zakumar blank. We we'll always use this Kung's Foundation um, White, it's a little bit cheaper, this Kung's line. And all of his panel liner, people always ask me what brand and number we use. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. He just got a bunch of everything. Just a quick haul. And actually, I'm, I was in such a rush to get this package and also just filmed it for you right now because I'm in the process of working on my Zaku and I need this clear green. So let's go. Let's go. See, I'm painting. And the package literally arrived when I was in the living room. Gaia clear green and the IPP clear green. I'm glad they came today. Wanted to get on with painting them. Decided to go with this color, the Gaia clear green. This is the IPP green. This is the Gaia green, so a lot brighter. Mix up the Gaia clear green. I think this is actually the Gaia clear blue because uh, Cookie poured it into here, but this is the final mixed color. And this is the IPP clear green and the IPP clear blue, which I mixed up and I didn't really like as much. Now we get onto the standard candy paint. I already have a very detailed candy paint tutorial. If you'd like to learn this part more in depth, you can click to the link above. Everything we're doing here is going to be the same. We start off with a tacky coat to help the paint stick and prevent pooling. After round one. I'm your father. No, you're not. I have a father. I'm your father. No, you're not. I have a father. Oh my god. Oh my god. For the second coat, I add just a dash of retarder thinner to make sure my paint is not too dark and add a little more shine. When candy painting, mixing your paint originally with leveling thinner also helps to even out any pooling if you overspray. Remember, leveling thinner dries more slowly and gives your paint more time to dry and even or level out. That's why it's called leveling thinner. I keep the paint job very thin in this round also. It's easy to be impatient and try to finish a candy paint job in one or two coats, which may cause pooling. I'm your father. Oh my god. This is the first after the first coat and this is after the second coat. You might not be able to see it on camera, but it is quite a lot darker. On to round three. Some people ask, how long do I wait between coats? It really depends on the paint thinner and your own time constraints. My paint job here is thin, lacquer doesn't take long to dry, and by the time you finish the whole set of parts, it'll be ready for the next round. Say, 30 minutes. I've decided to make this the final round. After applying decals, I will top coat with a clear gloss, which you'll see in the final full build video. Let the parts dry overnight before assembly. Here is the kit in slightly more natural lighting, although it's still really bright um, on camera, but I think it turned out super cool. And the arms, this is probably my favorite part. I can't wait to share with you in the full build video. Please watch out for it. Thanks for watching. Hook. Moeo. Moeo. I'm editing, and Cookie is working on this kit for his friend. Code Gias. I watched the anime, but Cookie, Cookie doesn't know it. There's a funny story behind this, but his friend basically, Cookie offered to build him a kit in the past and for free, uh, just for fun. And his friend gave him a PG Zaku, but uh, he kind of lost it and left it at the studio that he used to paint at. So his friend was like, what are you going to do about my kit? So Cookie's like, okay, just send me another one like an easy one and I'll build it for you so with a gloss finish your likes comments and subscription helps this channel grow on YouTube and puts me on the path towards making more videos thanks everyone bye